What is up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Welcome to our Singles Tournament Ultimate Schmodown Special. I'm Emma Fife, and our team tournament is well underway at this point. We've got a lot of matches in the books, but the Singles Tournament is coming up. And here to break it all down with me, I have got the Star Wars champion, the pit boss himself, Ken Knapsack. So happy to be here. You're doing a great job giving me kind of a time to sit back and be a pundit for once yeah, instead of host. I, know, I love it. I, I love know. it. Amazing. Um, yeah, I got the Star Wars hat on. Still the champ. Champ still here. And the commissioner and newly crowned movie trivia showdown champion of the world, Christian Harloff. Very weird to hear. Yeah. Um, but yeah. what I will say is uh, I'm not supposed to be here to quote uh, <laughs> clerks. But uh, listen, man, that, that was something very special. Once again, hats off to Dan Merle. Uh, it wasn't like we both said in, the, in that interview. It wasn't maybe the the prettiest match of all no, time, but sure. very hard questions. But yeah. it, it, it panned out the way that uh, I didn't kind of think it would or hoped to be honest <laughs> with. But here we are now. I'm happy that I get to represent the belt, and then I get to see what's going to happen here with this tournament because, like you said. The team tournament, for the most part, is done. We're just waiting on those finals now, and now we get into the singles. So we're going to break it down. Yep, and let's. Uh, Let me ask you this question: It's, it's been it. about a week with this. Mm -hmm. it's been a maybe, How many yeah. times have you tried it on in front of the bathroom mirror? Uh, uh, I, I haven't. Have what I posed? did do? <laughs> no, what I did do is that I brought my my, my daughter found out yeah. that I wanted. She wanted to see the championship, oh, so I brought it home. I let her. Uh, I told her. I said I probably won't have it for very long. So hold on that's to it while you can. No. Yeah, that's but she did. She wanted. It. She was happy that I won. Yeah. So let's get into this singles tournament a little bit because we just had our big five-way singles yeah. qualifier, and who came out on top of that? But Jason Inman. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, listen. First of all, like you guys saw in the in the post credit from uh, last week, I put a whole bunch of names into a hat and I threw some really great competitors in there, and out comes Ben Bateman, who mm -hmm. proved his worth in the team, obviously, and he comes out there and it looked like he was going to take it home. But Inman was kind of sneaky throughout yeah. those rounds, and I really liked the format of the way we did that Fatal Five, too. It, it made for a great match, and yeah. I'll tell you, Ben Bateman's probably up at night just going, yeah. my big fat Greek wedding! Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I feel like he's probably spending a lot of time <laughs> yeah. on IMDb just studying just cast studying lists cast. of yeah. every we, film that's come out since the yeah. beginning of time. We were that close in getting him and Roka again. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I got to say about Jason Inman, and um, I don't know what you feel about this, it's like I think this is a veteran competitor who knows so much that it's easy to overlook something someone like it because there's a lot of new flashy names and Jason Definitely. is just a quiet guy that shows up to do his job. Oh, I completely agree with you on that, Ken. And mm -hmm. I mean, Jason Inman even said it himself. A lot of the time he gets a lot of shit about mm -hmm. being the weaker member of Team right. Trek. And it's simply because Scott Mance is a beast in a category that everybody else is terrible at. Yeah. I mean, his face is on movie release dates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think we really do forget that Jason Inman, he's a, he knows what he's doing. Jason yeah. Inman's sneaky. I mean, look, he beat Scott Mance, too, because when Scott <laughs> Mance isn't focused by Jason Inman, <laughs> Scott Mance isn't doing as well. That uh, uh, is very true. But, I mean, yeah. there was just, it was a great performance by Jason Inman, and because of it now, he makes his way into the tournament. Yep, absolutely. So our first of Official singles match that we've got coming up is Snyder versus Nost. Man, I mean that is the rivalry just doesn't stop. It doesn't. With these two. It really it, doesn't. I mean, you know, you got a member of top ten, a member of the Patriots, top ten, your your former team champions, mm -hmm. and the Patriots have been Oh boy, have they been hanging onto that belt for a while. So I, I feel like Matt Nose could be coming into this hungry. Oh, I mean, you, you would assume so. I mean, there's got to be some revenge factors on the two times that they have, have faced each other in teams, and it hasn't gone well for Matt Nost. Um, and you think that, you know, like everyone always says, you were just talking about this with Inman. Everyone always talks about Matt Nost being the weaker player on top 10, and Matt Nost has proven over the, the the last course of the two, three months that he is anything but a weak player. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Matt Nost is number of those guys, because Roke is such a big personality. But Nost, don't forget, he's a snarky SOB sometimes. Oh, he sure he comes in <laughs> there. You have to tell me. Yeah, yeah coming in there firing, and there, there's, again, a reason that he was even initially recruited to be part of the Schmoes. No team where he's a movie fan. Right. Yeah. He's a comic, but he's a movie fan. And, and I think guys like that who don't always wear the cowboy hats, and that's not a knock against anyone who does, just you can you can skip over them. Yeah, but that being said, though, Snyder is, uh, and I can say this again firsthand, playing Snyder, he is dangerous. He oh, really yeah. is. And this isn't a knock on JTE whatsoever. Snyder is the stronger of the two, and JTE is a very strong player. No, I think that's oh, a knock on yeah. JTE, and it's, and, it's, and it's okay. It is warranted. It's okay. <laughs> no, but what I mean is this. Yeah. Snyder is so, Snyder's knowledge is so extensive. Yeah. Snyder I, is a powerhouse. I have to agree with you on that. I mean, every time Patriots go up against somebody or just Snyder in general, he he really feels 
unstoppable to yeah, me. I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was that last question for me that I had to beat him. Um, he is. He's a tough. He's a tough guy. It's going to be a tough, tough fight for Nost. I'm going to have to swing just and say that uh, Snyder, I think, is going to pull this one out. Yeah, as, as much as it breaks my heart and yeah. I'm, I'm all about team top 10 getting, you know, since yeah, they've right. made the shift to being more good guys, I still feel like you got Snyder? uh, Snyder's unstoppable, man. Clean sweep. I'm going Snyder. Yeah. All right. So what we got next? All then? right. We've got Makuga versus Kalinowski. The old <laughs> dog versus the new dog here. I mean, because Makuga is quite, I mean, he, let's look, he might be seven and seven, but he mm -hmm. is absolutely an icon. In oh, this a hundred percent. He gets to the finals of, of 2014, almost beats Riley for the championship, yeah. Yeah. has a couple of shots almost to become number one, had that iconic feud with, with Dagnino or Finstock, mm -hmm. had that match with Finn Draco, yeah. if you will. He's had so many memorable moments. He's been like the ultimate good guy, the yeah. ultimate face in this league. But enter Mike Kalinowski, who the fans love. And Mike Kalinowski played pretty great in that team tournament against, uh, who was their, their first match. He wound up getting that per against DC Movie. No, excuse me, against uh, Six, Six Degrees. Degrees. <laughs> he wound up getting that perfect round yeah. and joined that elite club. Yeah. The guy's a player. He's a, he's a hardcore player. This is a battle of two likable dudes. I could see Makuga pulling this out, though, if he can get that magic. You know, there has to be something from all the support that Josh Makuga gets from fans. You know what I mean? As you say, he's a real icon in this league. Yep. And so the fact that he has all of these people rooting for him, that that must be a feeling that kind of propels you through sure. your matches. But I do agree with you that, that Mike Kalinowski, people, people are coming out for him. Yeah. And I've known Mike Kalinowski for years. I know he has a very broad movie knowledge and it, it, it could be anybody's game, but I, I might, give the edge to Josh McCuga only because he is a little bit more Season. experienced. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That might be it for me. Kalinowski has proven himself time and time again after maybe some rough starts. But that's the thing. He's kind of one of those guys that came out of uh, nowhere. And, you know, he came from somewhere, but comes out of nowhere. But th that stops being a surprise after a while, where Makuga, we have enough case evidence there that his his luck, sometimes dumb luck it would seem, never seems to run out. I'm going Makuga. All right, we got Makuga, I think, all around Again. the board. And we got uh, Snyder on the board. Sweet. So, okay. All right, after that, it looks like we have got McWeeny versus JTE. All right, McWeeny Ooh, versus wow. JTE. Um, cool. This is a champion versus a guy who might be champion. As we know, <laughs> above the lines go into the finals here. Yes. And uh, I think that Drew McWeeny so far has been, you would have to say, the MVP of that tournament. Yeah. He has fulfilled that potential everyone was talking about. Maybe he wasn't at first when he lost to Snyder. It's true. The thing that's interesting, though, to me about Drew McWeeny is I think that now that he's playing with Sam Levine, it's bringing out all the best parts of him yeah. as a competitor and also as a personality within this league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will be curious to see if that now translates over into his singles career or not. Yeah. Because I feel like... He's 3-1, though. Remember that. Yeah, he is 3-1. That it's, is it's, true. He's a Quiet three it's, and one. That's very true. Yeah. But I, I also feel like people have been expecting McWeeny to be the powerhouse sure. that we've seen in the team tournaments. And while yes, he has done extremely well in singles, he hasn't been quite as impressive in singles as he was when he initially came out of the gate. I agree. As someone who saw him rip through the 70s category and not be in Rachel tournament, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw with that look. I, I know JT, and sometimes hurts me to say this, will never back down from anyone. No, he he not. is not <laughs> afraid of Drew McWeeny, or as he calls, calls him Doug McWeems, but I know <laughs> he wants to play anybody to prove himself. Uh, I I hate to say this, but I'm going to go with JT. You're going to go with the evil. Ah. I'm going to go with a little evil. Yeah, see, I, I don't you owe me one, JT. Here's the thing is that if, remember, he's been in this position before in the beginning, yeah. the, the season premiere of this season, he went up against the Beast, who everyone said, that's your next champion. He's going to destroy Dan Merle. He's going to be undefeated yeah. for this whole entire career. And JTE didn't just beat him. Yeah. TKO yeah. of Bibiani. Yep. So JTE is like a JTE again. Remember the disastrous career he had last season? I remember the tears. <laughs> and now, now he is the most dominant team champion that we have ever had. Yeah. He um, he beat he's he beat you. Yep. He's, he's having a hell of a run here. If he can beat McWeeny and one other person, he puts himself in contention for player of the year. Don't just worry about him yeah. winning the whole tournament. There is a scenario where Little Evil could win this, and I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. But Drew McQueenie is just showing he is he is pretty devastating. I'm going Drew. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Drew McQueenie as well, simply from the point of view that I 
I, I just believe in him. I believe that he can be this yeah. unstoppable powerhouse that everybody wants him to be, and he's a great guy. So Right. <laughs> All right, so what's up next? All right, after that, we have got Levine versus the Beast himself, Bibiani. Yeah, I mean, this is Bibiani now. You know, Bibiani's had a rough career. We talked about JTE. He's had a rough season yes. so far because Bibiani yeah. came in where, like I said, everyone was touting him as the next great thing. They can't wait for him to be the champion. Then he has that snag against JTE, um, and then he starts to get himself back. He had the loss against me that he, he like he wins one he loses one he wins one he loses one and then he goes up and he plays scott manson had a really good match but all the stuff happened in the team tournament he found himself in the same position he's in there with critically acclaimed those are your next champions loses in the first round to late to the party he is coming off he's, he's a little shell shocked right now so he needs this win he needs to show but like i said lose one win one just lost against um critic excuse me uh, um the kids from arizona here yeah. uh, late to the party mm -hmm. um so i think that he is coming in for revenge and, but it's not going to be easy against Sam Levine. It's not. And and Sam Levine, again, is coming off of such a high. Obviously, uh, you know. He's going to the finals. Above the line yeah. has done unbelievably well yep. in, yeah. in the team tournament. And I, I think that both uh, Sam Levine and Drew McWeeny have really benefited from being together. It has brought out the best in both of those players. And I feel like we're going to start to see that, that confidence translate into their singles careers as well. Yeah, Ked. I am going to go with the Beast simply because, and it's nothing against Sam, I just think the Beast is beyond motivated. He's out for vengeance. He's out for personal redemption, and I think he's going to come in there and focus it and just take it. And I wouldn't count him out much longer. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think that Sam Levine right now is a very strong player. Um, showed that he, he could hang with Dan Merle. Um, has only lost to Dan Merle, Clark Wolf, um, Mark Riley. And, um, I, and there was one other, I can't remember who it was, but it's it, all elite players um, he, who he has lost to so far. So I think that, but this one's going to be tough. I yeah. think this, this one's going to be tough for him as, as he's going against a very hungry Bibiani. I'm going to go with Bibbs. For me, it's so interesting. It really could go either way. It, it could go that Sam continues to keep up that team magic that he's had with Drew McWaney, or as you say, mm -hmm. Ken, the Beast comes in really, really hungry for revenge. It's going to depend on which of those powers is stronger. Right. So I, I think for me, I'm going to go with I, I'm, I'm going to go with Sam Levine on this because right. I do think that he and McWaney have really been on a roll, and it would be it would be a shame to see that wow. it would be a shame to see that end. Well, Sam also his other loss obviously came to Mark Ellis in last year's tournament. Yeah. So that's where the other loss. That came. is very true. Yeah. So after that, we have got Mark Andrews. Draco versus Rachel Cushing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's start with you, buddy. You're, <laughs> we don't know. You're, you still haven't really told us. Former teammate, still teammate. We don't unclear. know. Unclear. Well, unclear you know, teammate. I'll say this. Whatever happens, I will always be in Rachel's corner. How about that? All I, right, that's I'm fair. picking Rachel here. I I love Mark Andreco. I've yeah. known him for a long time now, working with him around this town, and I don't doubt him ever. We saw what he did to the free for all. We've seen what he's done done in some of these matches, uh, even in some team losses. He's there. The thing with Rachel, I've worked with her now. Obviously, I've been in matches. If if she could focus, sometimes Rachel, you know, I love you. You get a little, she gets a little rattled early on. If she could keep calm, find some Zen, find some Hobbit-like Gandalf uh, Zen inside her. I think if she focuses, she knows more than yeah. just about anyone around here. And I don't want to push, put pressure on her, but I'm going Cushing. Yeah. The crusher. I, you know, Rachel Cushing, I agree with you, Ken. I think if she has a strong round one, and again, round one is so the luck of the draw, but if she has a strong round one and she spins a category that she's pretty good at in round two and she's got a lot of strengths, she could she mm -hmm. could definitely take this. She's certainly going to go toe to toe with Andrea. Yeah, well, they're going to go toe for toe. They have a great knowledge and they have a lot of the same strengths. Yeah. Um, there are a couple more things that Rachel knows, I think, better than Andrea and more than Andrea knows than Rachel. My thing with Rachel here is, by the way, Rachel Cushing, who has been in this league maybe five or six months, has already become like an icon. Mm -hmm. Has already, I mean, the, mm -hmm. and I'm not just talking about with how many emails I get from from women who are so excited that Rachel Cushing is representing. I'm not just talking about the women. I'm talking about everyone. Mm -hmm. She has become this kind of beacon of hope for people in general because she just seems like she was just a regular fan who was just who loves movies, comes in here and shows she knows her stuff. What I have found with Rachel though, 
is in the big events, whether it's collision or free for all, she lets it get to her. And I also think that comes down to the experience. Now, Mark mm -hmm. Andreku, even though he's only been in the league for a year, um, he was very experienced with movie fights. Yeah. He's a very, mm -hmm. being in front of the spotlight, he runs with the lion's den. Mm -hmm. He's used to all the cameras. He's in the, the android. He's, yeah. the, he <laughs> he's is the android. He's not emotionless because he's got a lot of passion, but he's, he's calm and but collective. But he knows when to stay cool, calm and collective. We mm -hmm. saw what he did in the free for all. There are mm -hmm. two experiences. You see Rachel's experience in the free for all, and then you see what Mark Andreku Draco did when he knocked out some of the best players in the game in one round. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take Andraco in this one. I think Andraco is going to hold it together, stay cool, calm, and collected, and I see him advancing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you about Rachel getting a little frazzled about things. I'm still rooting for you, Rachel, but I think that where we're going to see Rachel triumph is in inner geekdom yeah. and that Andraco is going to win this one. Yeah, okay, what's yep. next? Next, we have Wolf versus Chandler. Yeah, uh, Classy Clark Wolf, if you saw what they did in the team, it was, that was, there was the last uh, run of the I Wolves know. of Steel, but what a run it was. It was mm -hmm. so What great. a run. Their last two matches that they won was a TKO and a KO, mm -hmm. and then they score 32 points against Above the Line and uh -huh. lose. And Clark Wolf was just on fire throughout this tournament. She is hungry. She is determined. Um, Brianne Chandler got into this tournament because we, we upped it to 15 to 16 players, mm -hmm. and she was one and one, and because of it, had the 15 spot, still able to move in. I think that she's a good player. I think that she has been learning and understanding the league. I think Clark Wolf is going to be too much for her to handle. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that. I mean, again, it, it boils down, uh, once again, to experience. Clark Wolf, Rookie of the Year last year, and she just, she's in it. She's in the zone, right. and I, I think it's going to be difficult to get her out of that zone, and I I think she's going to take this one. Yes. I uh, Here's the thing. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Classy Clark Wolf, but I feel, though, a vote against Miss Movies is is that type of inspiration that Miss Movies might she find does. that That's she'll true. become. And, and Jay Washington will be screaming. And Jay yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it'll be fuel for a fire. Absolutely. And we've seen that. If, if there is an award, maybe there is. You tell me. For most improved player there of the is. year? There is. There is? Yeah. I, I watched the awards last year. That's good. Um, it's a new category. It's a new category. Yeah. Uh, she would be my choice. Not that not improvement in what she knows. Over JTE? That's comeback player. Yeah. Most I, improved. It's kind of the same thing. Could be. All right. Yeah, we're battling. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wouldn't call. I don't think where I. Difference is, I don't think Bran came back from anywhere. I yes. think she emerged Understood. from somewhere. Understood. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then, uh, what is that our last one? We have one more, right? No. We have got uh, Ellis versus Howard. Ellis versus Howard. Same type of thing. I think these are the two very similar matches that we just talked about with Wolf and Brianne. Stacey Howard against Voiko in her single match showed do not underestimate yeah. her. You know, both Stacey and Brienne really impressed me with yeah. their singles debut because both of them came into this league being nervous about potentially participating in singles. They, they felt comfortable being together, being on a team, and then they both came into singles and absolutely crushed it. Right. I mean, it, it, Stacey blew through that action adventure category like it was nothing. Like not, She was so <laughs> impressive. She yeah. was so impressive in that match. And she, it's funny though, because I, it's when, when I saw her, I, I think her and Brienne work very well together. They do, they, they have a good chemistry. But I saw something in Stacy when she played in singles mm -hmm. that she was, it looked, she looked laser focused against Voiko. She was really dominant in that. But she's going up against my partner in crime. Uh, she's going up against last year's winner of the Ultimate Showdown, and that's Mark Baby Carrot Ellis. This yeah. is someone who has played for the championship. This is someone who has been a team champion. This is someone who has won the Ultimate Showdown twice, both in teams and singles, um, and helped create this game. He's coming off a loss against Clark Wolf, and it was a it was a good fight, but I you know I just think once again just to repeat myself I think that he'll be a little too much for Stacy to handle right now. I think he's got the experience. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. Again, I, I think that Stacy is a very strong competitor, a, a yep. much stronger than anybody anticipated even. But I do think that it is going to boil down to that that experience factor. You know, Mark. Mark Ellis is is the veteran of this league, yeah. so I, I would be surprised if she beat him. I think she's capable of it, but I think, again, any time you're participating in a, in a big event like this for right. the very first time, there is a certain amount of pressure that might just get Nerves to her. Nerves can get to you, yep. for sure, yeah. Yep. Ken. <sighs> Experience is great, but it can't, can't save you from the wheel sometimes. Yeah. It can't save you from picking you're, numbers. Are you going big upset here? Mm, I've... I have seen too many people bet against Stacey Howard. 
that it's a risk to bet against her again. But at the end of the day, I also know what baby carrots can do. Right. I will write Ellis down. Right. I hope I don't regret it. All right. Okay. So then I think right. we got last one. Yeah, that's it. No, no, no we're missing. There's one, no, there's one oh, more. Oh, that's yeah, right. Because Jason Inman right. is going to yeah. get the honor of going up against one John Steven Roca. The former champion, the former team champion, the former singles champion. Um, and he also, he was the finalist in the in the tournament last year. Mm -hmm. John Roca, we know, is, is one of the biggest superstars this league has yes. ever seen. Um, he has gone through a couple of different changes throughout his appearances. He is, he played great in the team uh, tournament. Um, this is just an ongoing theme. I think that, yes, we just saw Inman do a spectacular thing here in this Fatal Five way. John Roca is way too determined to get back. Remember, there's a stipulation <laughs> on Roca. Roca cannot go for this championship unless he wins at least three matches in a row. He's got to do that inside of this tournament or it's going to be a long time before he gets to play for that. Yeah, mm. I, I think that Jason Inman is a wonderful competitor, but he does not have the same sort of drive that yeah. Roca does. I mean, you know, Roca, you, you should see him before a match. He Back when we had a couch in the other room, he was always laying on the couch, listening to music, ignoring oh, everybody. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. he is so into this game. And I think that Inman is great, but his, his natural talent is not going to supersede Roca's laser focus. I think that's fair. You know, John Roca, you mentioned headphones. He walked around with these. <laughs> really, really cool headphones. Right. Christian loves. He, loves them. he does. Have Christian cool loves these headphones, and I know you had, you, you're envy of envious of these headphones. Of his headphones, yeah. They're so and nice. one day like an he was he was took a food break, but he left the headphones. And oh, I, I, John, you? I have to admit this. I put them on. Oh, do you love them? <laughs> and they're connected to an iPod, and was just playing. And here's what I here's what I heard. 1970, MASH, released, no, directed by. <laughs> he just has all this stuff recording. In his own voice? I, I he, loved, did he make yep. study files for yeah. himself? It was, uh, yes, it was his El Pollo Loco voice. And I'll, I'll tell you this, I love Jason Inman, but I got to go Rogue. All right, so yep. that's the first round. Then. That I is, so that is the first round of yeah. the singles tournament. So we're so. getting around the, now see our picks. What are our picks? And uh, mm. Well, we got to go through here. So, so, it's, so it's, 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 it's Okay. Well, let's see. So if I if I if we had Roca versus Inman right. is the first one. So it, the winner of Roca and Inman plays the winner of Sam and Bibbs. So I had so I have Roca and Bibbs, mm -hmm. which that's the match we've been waiting yeah, for. Yeah. That's the match that uh, has been teased, that has been mm -hmm. leading up since yeah. the collision, since the turn. So I got Roca versus Bibbs, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna take Roca in that yeah, one. I, okay. I I think that Roca is going to beat. Bibiani, because I think Roca, is, it's a win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And I think that Roca is just going to have uh, too much momentum, yeah. and I don't think Bibb's going to be able to hold them off. See, I have Roca versus Levine, which okay. now I'm upset because I want to see Roca right, versus right. Bibbs. But regardless, I think Roca is going to defeat whoever he goes up against. Yep. You got Roca I, have, I have Roca as well. Uh, beating yep. over Bibbs? Over Beast, Beast Bibbs, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. And then. A lot of nicknames. Yeah, so a lot, lot, of, lot of nicknames. Right. Okay, so then uh, whoever will have. Uh, Rachel, Rachel and Draco, and, and, Draco yep. and Ellis and Howard. So the winners of those will go up mm. against each other. Yeah. So for me, I had um, I had and Draco versus Ellis. Is, the, okay. is, is that you, that's yep. also yep. what I have? I, got I have Cushing Ellis. Yeah. You have yeah. Cushing Ellis. All right. So I got a Draco versus Ellis, and I'm going to take Ellis again. I think so. We're going to have in, um, Ellis is going to wind up playing Roca. In uh, in the semifinals mm -hmm. of that okay. bracket. I'm, yeah. I'm taking Rachel. You're I'm taking sticking with taking Rachel I'm all the way to the semifinals. I like it. You know. Solidarity, man. I, I got it. I got it. Yeah. All right. Same with you. Uh, I think that because uh, I have Andreco. You have Andreco, yeah, right. So, and I, hmm, Andreco versus Ellis. That's tough because we know what a strong competitor Mark Andreco is. Uh, and he's so calm and collected. I, you know, I'm going to go Andreco. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Andreco, you're going to have Andreco. And so you're going to have Andreco versus Roca. Roca. And yeah. I have, Ooh, I, I, like have, that. I have Ellis <laughs> versus Roca. You have Cushing versus Roca. Right. All right. Let's start with Cushing versus Roca. Who you got in that one? Uh, then I will take John. Okay. I, 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 we've all seen what John can do. Yeah. And that's, jokes aside, his passion drives him. But there's also just a base level of knowledge that is pretty impressive. Yeah. All right. And I feel like Andreco versus Roca would be a really interesting match because you're dealing with somebody like Roca who is so passionate right. and emotional right. versus Andreco. It's an Android. You know, we call him yeah. the Android right. for right. a reason. So I wonder if that would get to Roca, but I still, I, I Well, Tom Dagnino would be getting to him, you know that. No, that yeah. is, uh, that's true, that's true. You'll have Tom Dagnino there just yelling from the sidelines, which is always a delight. Yep. Uh, yeah, but I, I still think, because I've seen Roca go into matches being convinced 
that he is going to fail miserably right. and come out on top. So I'll still go Roka on that. All right, I have a rematch of last year's finals in the semifinals, and that's Ellis versus Roka. But oh. I have the opposite. I have the opposite choice this time around. I think that Roka will avenge his loss to Ellis, as much mm -hmm. as it pains me to say that. Mm -hmm. I think that Roka will take himself to the finals, um, and it's going to be mm -hmm. very interesting to see. But Roka will be sitting there as he waits for who we're about to break down yep. here yep. next. We've got fun. Wolf versus Chandler and Kalinowski versus Makuga. So I had. I think we all had Clark. Wolf. We all had Clark so, Wolf. Yeah. I think we all had Makuga. So I have, yeah. so look at Wolf Makuga. So that would be yeah. a rematch again from last year to where Makuga beat Wolf in one of the biggest upsets of the entire tournament last year. So then it's, we're all now talking about Wolf versus Makuga 3. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. This time I think that Wolf avenges the loss and I think that Wolf will win the trilogy and Clark Wolf will make the semifinals. Yeah, redemption for Clark Wolf all the way. There is no way classy Clark Wolf will let herself lose to Josh Makuga in life again. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> true. And it's so far our uh, final. That uh, is absolutely yeah. true. We have got uh, McWeeny versus JTE and Snyder versus Nose. Yeah, I had McWeeny and I had um, Snyder. Snyder. So that's another rematch. Yeah. We got McWeeny Snyder too. If mm. that goes down and. It's the same thing I said before. I think it'll switch over, and I think McWeeny will win. I think McWeeny will wind up taking the, the the avenge his loss from last time, and we'll have McWeeny versus Clark Wolf. As much as I would love to say I'm confident that Drew McWeeny would be able to take down Jeff Snyder, there's uh, that there's something about that man. He just mm -hmm. keeps winning. So, yeah. and I I think he's just. Gonna well, keep on winning because of my prediction. You have an amazing prediction. <laughs> I, I love have this. Patriots. Civil War. Yeah, yes. I love that. Snyder versus <laughs> JTE. It would be chaos in the locker glorious, room. Glorious, glorious. I would love to see it. And if that happens, I'll, I'll tell you. I spent a lot of time traveling on the road with JTE, and I know how much it means. I know how much it means to him, which is why I think he would flub it and yeah. lose, and I it's have Snyder, Snyder winning. So I you would have love Snyder. to just see a double KO there. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had that in the no, league before. Right. They just both pass out <laughs> during answering <laughs> questions. Yeah. So, all right, so then, so my finals, I have Roka versus McWeeny. Um, oh. You have I, Snyder. Well, I have Snyder Wolf. Oh, if, Snyder Wolf. Uh, yeah, I got to choose there, and I, I would. Uh, I, I, in my heart, I want Wolf to go. I would go with Snyder. He's just a, he's just a machine. So you got Roka versus Snyder. I got Snyder Roka in the versus finals. Snyder. I've yeah. got, I've got uh, McWeeny versus Roka. I in the also finals. have Roka versus Snyder. You have Roka yeah. versus Snyder. Yeah. Okay, so Roka versus Snyder on that side. Uh, Ken, Roka mm -hmm. versus Snyder. Who comes out winning? If Snyder can get into Roka's head, not before, not in promos, not in mm -mm. texts and tweets, but right there on the stage. I will go with Snyder. Uh, I have to go with John Roca because I cannot have Jeff Snyder have multiple belts. Uh, I understand. In this league, that'd be hard. That'd be hard to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. All right. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to beat me. Um, That's true. Again, I beat uh, him with true. Before. You know. That's true. There's still you standing before That's him. Yes, but what I will say is that don't forget this: is that the, the both the singles finale and the t and the team finale will air in the same week and take place in the same week. And I believe that Drew McWeeny will be in both finals. I think Drew McWeeny is going to win both finals. I think Above the Line will be wow. playing Dang. at the Spectacular for the championship, and I believe that I will be defending my championship against Drew McWeeny. I've got Drew winning the whole thing. If if that happens, if it's if it's Drew you, I want you to take a picture of this. <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> frame it, put it in your daughter's room. And say daddy yeah. was daddy was a champ once, yeah. kids. Well listen, um, I, yeah, that's what they said against Bibiani too. That's true, yeah. too. That's, that's, that's what they said but, against Snyder uh, too. Well, and Snyder you, I might go you. Yeah. Again? You beat him before. I have, yeah. So you could definitely do it again. It, it, regardless, this is a fun tournament. It is. Yeah. Uh, we've got so many great competitors of varying of levels of experience within this yep. league. All yep. extremely strong competitors. It really, it could be anybody's game because at the end of the day, if you spin a good category on that wheel, mm -hmm. That's huge true. advantage. Now, if you guys want to get an advantage and you want to win a great prize, same thing we did for the teams, it's opening back up. Schmodown2017 at gmail.com. Get your brackets in now. It is going to close out before the first match airs, 12 a.m. the night before the first match airs, before Snyder and Nost. You guys have a chance to start submitting them now. Who do you think is going to win? Submit it and go on over to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook group. Find out some stats. Talk to your fellow uh, fans. There's a lot going down. There is, and be sure to tune in to the beginning of our singles tournament on September 26th when Jeff Snyder will take on Matt Nost.
For Christian Harloff and Ken Knapsack, I'm Emma Fife. Thanks for tuning in, guys.